this video, we're going to look at the select case statement in Excel VBA. Now, this is a great alternative to the if statement in situations where you have a list of items and you want to check a value to see if there is a match of any one of those list items. So in this first example, I have a list of inventory items. I have a column for the batch ID, which identifies the batch in which the inventory materials were purchased in. We have a cost per unit. And then in column C, we have stage of completion where it's at in the inventory process. Over here, I have a summary of all the different stages and kind of how they appear in chronological order. So we have awaiting shipment in storage. We have phase one, two, and three, which is indicating that it's in process. And then we have the complete phases, which are pending review, meaning it's complete, but needs to be reviewed and then complete. So what we want to do in this fourth column is use the select case statement to put these stages into broader categories. Anything that's in awaiting shipment or in storage, we want to categorize as not in process. Anything in phases one through three, we want to categorize that as in process. And then these final two stages, we just want to categorize as out of process. So the first thing we want to do is get into the VBA editor window. You can do that by clicking on the developer ribbon up top and clicking the visual basic button or hitting Alt F11. Anywhere in this project window, I'm going to right click, go to insert and then module. So we'll call this subroutine categories. And to save time here and not make this video so long, I created code already and I'm just going to paste it in here and quickly run through the code. So we have an object variable called WB, which is as the data type workbook. It represents the workbook we're in now. We have a, another object variable called worksheet, represents the sheet we're on now called inventory. We have a variable called last row which represents the last row containing values in our data set. We use the keyword set to set our workbook variable equal to this workbook, the workbook we're in now. We use keyword set to set our worksheet variable equal to our workbook variable we just created and then reference worksheets and inventory to set this variable as our inventory worksheet. Our last row variable is equal to our worksheet variable we just created. And then we use cells as the range reference. We reference rows and count. This counts every single row on the entire spreadsheet. For our column index, we have column one because we know there's always going to be values in column A. So this takes us to the very last cell in column A at the very bottom of our spreadsheet. From there, we do the equivalent of control up arrow, which is end Excel up, and then keyword row, and this returns the row number of the last row containing values. So this dynamically always gets the last row on our spreadsheet that has values in it. So at this point, what we want to do is run through all of our cells in column C and check what the value is in each of those cells one by one. So we're going to perform a for loop. So before our for loop, we declare a counter variable called I, which represents each row that we want to loop through. So the for loop repeats a series of the same step based on a beginning and ending point that you specify. So we have the keyword for, we have our counter variable, and then we set that equal to our beginning point and then define how long we want this loop to go for. We want it to go to our last row variable, which right now is a value of 18. 
So this runs from row 2 to row 18. Inside our loop, we declare another object variable called cell. It's going to be as the data type range. We're going to set that cell variable equal to our worksheet and then cells. And we have our counter variable for the row index, which begins on row 2 and then column 3. So in the first cycle of this loop, this cell variable is equal to C2 and then we have our select case statement. So that begins with the keyword select case and then right after that we have the thing we want to evaluate. Well that's the value of our cell variable. So we have our first case condition which is keyword case and then our conditions. Is this cell equal to any of these? Awaiting shipment comma in storage. If it's any one of these, what we want to do is with our cell variable, go over one column to the right without moving rows. So we use the offset method. The first input is how many rows we want to go down or up. We don't want to go either way. We want to stay on the same row. So we have zero there and we want to go one column to the right. So we have a value of 1, so we want to put a value of not in process if any of those first matches are found. Then we have our next case statement. If it's any one of these three, phase 1, 2, or 3, what we want to do is input a value of in process in the cell to the right. Then we have our case else. If any of these first conditions are not met, it's everything else. We want to input a value of complete. So that is everything. So we end our select statement and then we're still in our loop. So we have the keyword next. Reference our counter variable takes us back up to the top that increments this from 2 to 3 so the i becomes a value of 3 repeats all these steps keeps on cycling until we end until it's gone through our last row and then at that point we are done so I'm gonna go ahead and hit the play button and what we should see is our broader categories get input into column D and there it is. You can see anything in storage or awaiting shipment is not in process. Anything in phase one, two, or three is in process. Anything that is either pending review or complete gets a value of complete in the cell to the right. So in this final example, we want to use the case statement in situations where we're looking at a range of numbers to see if our criteria is greater than or equal to a value, less than a value, or between a range of values. So you can see here I have a data set of sales reps with their monthly sales in column B and what we want to do is look at the value in column B and apply a bonus amount based on the criteria over here so we have anything greater than or equal to ten thousand dollars in sales gets a ten percent bonus anything from five thousand dollars to just below ten thousand gets a five percent anything from twenty five hundred to just below five thousand gets two percent and anything under 2500 gets a 1% bonus. So this is set up fairly identical to what we did in our first example other than the case statement portion and the sheet being a different sheet name. So our cell variable this time is going to be our worksheet variable which is the sheet we're on now and then cells begins on row 2 and we're looking at 
the second column. So this begins on cell B2. And for our first case condition, we have keyword case is, because we have greater than or equal to a value of $10,000. If that is the case, we want to, in the cell directly to the right of B2, multiply our cell variable, which should be 10,000 for our first iteration of the loop, times 10%. If that first condition is not met, it's not e it's not greater than or equal to 10,000. We want to check to see if it's between 5,000 and 9,999 dollars and 99 cents. So we have a range of numbers with keyword two. So we have the beginning point of our range, ending point of our range with two in between. That will get a percentage applied to that sales amount of 5%. If it's from 2,500 to just below 5,000, we have 2%. Anything else gets a bonus of 1%. Now, the only other thing I did here is with our cell value um, variable, we want to offset, go one cell to the right, and apply a number format of an accounting style format. So I'll go ahead and hit play. You can see this applies all the proper percentages based on the monthly sales here, and then applies an accounting style format. Well, that is all for now. Thanks for watching. Please remember to hit that subscribe button.